in the documentary, there's an, sort of an underlying love story between mm. you and Patricia, a fellow uh, flat earther. We're still really, really close. Don't, don't get me wrong, but yeah. we realize now that, that flat earth is kind of bigger than us. And so there's this sort of team aspect. So we do stuff all the time. I mean, she's here and, you know, we, we've been hanging out and doing stuff. But we realize that uh, we don't want to, bri- you know, ruin the team, break up the team, mm. you know, in case, you know. Right. So we'll see don't what happens. We'll see. Yeah, we'll Just see what happens <laughs> in the future. No, I love her to death. And, yeah. and it, she's, she's a wonderful person. Uh, and, yeah, it was really sweet to see what never they did in the film. Never say never. Okay. Hey. Yeah, but thank you for rooting for me. Because <laughs> I, I heard that from a lot of people. Even trolls are going, rooting for you, man. <laughs> Can I ask one request? Could, yeah. Could you just say, uh, hey, to Patricia out there, say, hey, you know, we're, we're you want me to put a good word. Yeah, put him a good word right. for me. Yeah. Hey, Patricia, it's um, Vaughn here. <laughs> <laughs> we're all rooting for this fella, all right? <laughs> ZM. Fletch, Vaughn, and Megan, the podcast. ZM. It's- the Netflix documentary is behind the curve. Now I go into chat rooms and people freeze. <laughs> Mark Sergeant's here. Oh my God, just, just. Be normal, be cool. I didn't want to wake up and do this. It was something that just seemed to happen. I didn't choose Flat Earth. Flat Earth chose me. And we're joined in studio by Mark Sargent from the documentary. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Welcome to New Zealand. Yeah, it's a great country. Love it. Thank you. Fly here. I did fly here. Look out the window. <laughs> see you need that that 30, did, did I see the curtain? Well, no, because it was nighttime. The inti- I flew. It, we never saw daylight the entire trip. That sounds like a conspiracy in itself. I know. Right? <laughs> I don't want that. I want you to see what's out the window. Uh, so, when you you've, you've been in New Zealand, there's been a flat Earth conference. How many people came to the New Zealand flat Earth? Oh, not that many. It was less than a hundred, but it was a really enthusiastic crowd, and and we had a science group debate us at the end, and it was wonderful. I've, I've in New Zealand, and I don't know if this is the case in the United States or around the world, but in New Zealand, it seems to be quite tied to religion. Mm. The Flat Earth movement, I saw some um, people talking about it and they were also quite heavily involved in religion. Is that kind of a thing around the world? Uh, Yeah, it it really is. I can't speak for the other four main religious houses, but in the United States, at least half of the Flat Earth community are strong Christians. No no question. Okay. Okay, so why why do you think that is? Is there uh, like Bible verses? And stuff yeah, like? yeah. There's a lot of. I don't know if you want to go into chapter and verse here, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of Bible verses. We have, in fact, there are Christian conferences that are tied to flat Earth in the United States, and yeah, just about every verse, chapter and verse in the Bible talks about some sort of flat stationary of the Earth, with the exception of Isaiah forty twenty two, which says, "He who sitteth upon the circle of the Earth." Well, circle isn't a uh, globe, or it's not ball, it's not sphere in the ancient Hebrew. I mean, look, your dinner plate is a circle, it's round, so, yeah. Right, you're saying, okay, go right. try and take the calories. How, how's life changed since the documentary? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's a great question, because before the documentary came out, well, actually, it was before it hit Netflix, yeah. because we were already on Amazon and iTunes and, right. and YouTube movies and stuff like that. I had no idea that everybody under the age of 30 owns Netflix, at least in the United <laughs> States. I had no idea. I don't own yeah. it. I'm a little older, and then when it came out, my email load doubled, and then all of a sudden, the conferences just exploded to where we're on tour now. I mean, after this, I go to Calgary, Stockholm, UK, uh, Mount Shasta, California, Dallas, Texas. All around the globe. Yeah, yeah, all around the globe. <laughs> yeah. 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 So you've got some models here. You've got yeah. the, the flat earth. Now, I see the ring of ice. That's a that's the theory, isn't it? The, the, right. We're surrounded by a ring of ice. And recently right. people have been saying they want to do a trip to get over that wall. Right. Could, could would you, you be interested in going on that I, trip? I would love to. By the way, that trip was a complete myth that was conjured up by some media guy in the UK. Uh, he had talked about how Logan Paul was thinking about it, moving to Antarctica and other people that were, were talking about it. But there was nothing tied to the Flat Earth community at all. Oh, right. So everybody jumped on it. All of a sudden, there's like 20 stories and I'm answering questions. It's like, so when is this cruise ship going to uh, take off? I'm going from Miami? It's no part. It was it's the, the Flat Earth Conference in the United States in 2020 is leaving out of Miami, but it's just a cruise ship. Right, it's, it's right. not. It's not going down. No cruise ships go from Miami to Antarctica. Well, for, those, for those that are listening now and haven't seen the Netflix documentary, what is, can you just sum up your theory on on where we are right now? Sure, 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 sure. And I know I'll, I'll try to do it for radio and video at the same time, which is, <laughs> <laughs> no, because I have props. You guys don't know I, I have props sitting in front of me. You've got a small globe. Uh, yes, I've got a small globe. I've got more in my bag, uh, which is most mainstream scientists say that we are on this tiny little rock that's covered with water and a little bit of smoke and it's flying through space in impossible directions and that we are insignificant. We're just this little accident. Flat earthers say that, no, you are living in a planetarium, a terrarium. 
aquarium, a snow globe, uh, a building, for lack of a better term, with walls and a floor and a ceiling, and w there is no space outside. This is it. You're living so in a building. No, it isn't. Who, who made that? Who made the planetarium or the terrarium or whatever? Good question, and a big oh, so question. Flat earthers don't have an answer for Well, it's that. not us. I mean, whoever built it is much older and much more powerful than us. So then you really go into one, one of two tracks, which is, is it an advanced civilization or is it the divine? And really, you're just splitting hairs at that so point. So we're like a game of Sims <laughs> for an ancient... Yeah, 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 in, in a lot of ways. I mean, who's like this... I'm sorry, what? Like a zoo. Yeah, just yeah, it. exactly. Who's to say this, is, this isn't some Petri dish? Who's to say that this little model isn't sitting here on a desk that doesn't have 7 billion people in it right now? But I just, um, w all respect, yeah. why is it hard to understand that there's a rock flying through space, but you can understand that someone made a terrarium? Excellent question. And that is, and I should, I should pose this to anyone that's listening right now, which is, can I prove this to you right now? No, I can't, but I can create, like, create I treat it like a court case, which is, can I create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that the only place you have left to turn is something like this? Yeah, yeah, I can. I can do it all day long. I can give you some quick examples. I don't know how much time we have, though. But what, what about the International Space Station and the cameras? Oh, my Lord. Why would you believe the America? In fact, no, it really surprises me. Outside of the United States, you know, I, I know like, oh, yeah, the Americans went to the moon. But if you're in the U.S., wave the flag, rah, rah, go team. I get that. Why outside of the United States people believe? It's like, oh, yeah, whatever the Americans put out there on television is the absolute truth, including the Apollo mission. Come on. So you think that the Apollo mission, the International Space Station, the Mars rover, all yeah. of that is all set up? Yep. If, right. if the opportunity arose within your lifetime to go into space and see it from, would you believe it? with your own yeah. eyes or would you think then you were being tricked? No, that's an excellent question and absolutely I would go up and no, I wouldn't think it was being tricked because everybody that goes into Flat Earth says the same thing, which is in fact, the t-shirt literally reads, I became a Flat Earther because I tried to disprove it. Everybody hated Flat Earth. I hated it for nine months and, and what happens is you say, okay, this is horrible and then you keep trying to lean on this and the more you lean on this, you realize there's more loose threads and by the time you're done, it's like, I can't prove this anymore in a court of law and it's like, okay, then you start, this becomes a lot more palatable. At so, the end of the documentary, yes. spoiler alert, uh, there's a, um, a scientific test that doesn't prove what the people are hoping for it to prove, right, the flat earth right, right. theory. So, and then the field just gets adjusted of, well, that's not going to work. Right, right. Let's find something that works. Want me to comment? Yeah. Okay, sure. <laughs> for, first off, uh, you got to remember, the director, by the time we got to the end of this thing, I didn't make this movie at all. Yeah. It was yeah. made by a team out of Los Angeles, uh, Daniel Clark. By the time we got to the end of this thing, he hated Flat Earth. He hated it so much, uh, mostly because, and uh, spoiler alert, when the 12-year-old kid came up to me uh, during the conference and was asking me questions while I was on stage, at that, and they said this in the director's commentary, they said that was the moment we had to take a stand because it's all fun and games until the children are involved. It's like, I'm not recruiting kids. But anyway, uh, so he was going to, so I'm sorry, the short version is power of editing. Poor Jaron and the test. First off, Jaron should have known better, rookie mistake, and you hate to see it, which is you do not do a test for the first time live in front of, uh, in front of cameras. He should have done this way beforehand. But the second thing was he didn't even have line of sight, and they edited just about everything out. The power of editing, don't get me wrong, I mean, I love it, but at the same time it can go against you, like the green button that I supposedly didn't push. So are you saying that the test did work, but it got edited out? No, no, I'm saying the test failed, but it was going to fail since minute one because he never had line of sight to begin with. Right. So th there wasn't much I could do, but they left off just so many things out, but it, that doesn't surprise me. We shot for seven months, and they had to whittle it down to 100 minutes. Right. Have you ever spoken personally to an astronaut? Yes. And, yes. And how did that conversation go down? It went horribly. Uh, <laughs> it went really, really bad. Well, no, I wasn't blindsided. I was done. I was doing uh, Piers Morgan, uh, Good Morning Britain with Terry Virts, was the astronaut. He was one of ours, uh, not one of the Canadians. And uh, or, I'm sorry, uh, Piers did everything he could to deflect. Absolutely everything he could. I mean, I couldn't, I could only get one answer in, and Terry would not talk to me directly. I mean, the first question I even asked him, they we wouldn't even answer, which was, okay, why, when the Americans took the first blue marble shot of the Earth from space in 1972, why was that the only picture taken for 43 years? Why didn't they take a second shot until 19, I'm sorry, 2015? And Terry was like just silent. He wouldn't even address me by, by name. It was amazing. I know, right? <laughs> trust, me, trust me when I say this. No, look, man, I, I did not want to get into Flat Earth. Flat Earth is a horrible, terrible thing. In fact, uh, to your listeners, I gotta say, look, if you like your life the way it is, if you wake up every morning and thumbs up, everything is awesome, don't do it. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you because you're putting yourself 
well out into the open and people are very vocal against yeah. you. Why, why bother? Why do it? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, it, I, it was in the documentary, which was I didn't choose Flat Earth. Flat Earth chose me. It was like an amusement park ride, just pulled up in my living room one day, said, get on. And it, honestly, if I live long enough to write an auto autobiography, it's going to be called unsolicited. Everything that I've done, including this conference, including this interview, people are just, I don't have to pick up the phone. People just keep contacting me and right. saying, and like, look. So if Elon Musk or mm. Richard Branson uh, said, I'm giving you a free ride to space next week, right. you, you would do it? Of course I would. And, and by the way, Elon Musk is a total fraud. I hate that guy. Oh, I, I love hate that. Elon. No, no, no. Wait, Every, about, everything everything he has ever done. We'll get to the Tesla in space. Oh, everything yeah. he has ever done. Yeah. In fact, the, even the New York Post, even our own uh, the, the New York Post actually ran a headline, said, I was so happy when they did, said Elon Musk is a total fraud. He never falls through with anything. Remember, he was supposed to send two people to Mars last year. Or I'm sorry, two people to the to the moon and back last yeah. year, and he didn't. Well, but I'm I don't sorry. think it's like that easy, Mark. It's not just like I'm going to send them to Mars. No, no. Then. Why say it though? No, everything. Look, he also said he was going to make a bullet train underground from Los Angeles to San Francisco, yeah. and a super airliner that was going to go to China in two hours and cost about as much as a coach ticket. He's ambitious. And then, no, I'm sorry. It, no, Me there's some... Megan also has a huge crush on him. Yeah. So. Elon Musk. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going to. No, I'm not going to pick on you. Who invented? Who invented Tesla Motors? It wasn't Elon Musk. He just bought it. Elon Musk made his oh, money. He's a in great businessman. <laughs> yeah, no, no. He was a good programmer. He he helped design PayPal, and that's and what a great thing to get into. And he made yeah. billions of dollars. So, so what about the Tesla that he put in space uh, with, with the astronaut? The <laughs> we tore that thing down. In fact, when somebody sent me the first image of that, I initially thought I, I started buzzing people. I go, who? Yeah. I go, who photoshopped this? I go, was that Jaron? Was it Globusters? Who who did this? And they go, man, no, man, that's a live link. I'm going. What? I started to develop like a facial tick. And so I, uh, I I started calling around. We we broke it down. No, no, that car was impossible. Uh, every pressure in that system should have detonated. The windows should have spider webbed in two seconds. The tires should have exploded. Not to mention there was no marketing on it whatsoever. It's like, are you kidding me? There's a there's Tesla and SpaceX, and you don't have a single logo of that entire car. Well, in fact, why did you use the convertible in the first place? Why didn't you use your flagship? Put four seats. You could have sold the whole thing to Disney. Put Boba Fett in one, Stormtrooper in the other, <laughs> Iron Man and Groot. You could have paid that for that thing ten times over. And, and he never did it again. And he turned off the cameras the second started, started heading towards the moon. No, 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 no. Terrible. Not buying it. All right, well, <laughs> uh, we, we've got Mark Sargent in, in the studio. If you have a question for him, 0800 dials at him right now. You can text her as well, 9696. And we're going to come back next and you can take some more questions, Mark. Oh, these are You're loving well. this. You're oh, loving yeah, this. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have in studio with us Mark Sargent from the Netflix documentary Behind the Curve. Um, we have a text that has come in, and I feel like this is um, very true to how I'm feeling at the moment. Mm. Um, Daniel said, I've never liked someone that I can completely disagree with more than Mark. Aww. So while we disagree with you, you're still a very likable person. I tried. I am a nice guy, believe it or not. You're, I, I, you're just a flat earther. Uh, yeah, I'm just a flat earther <laughs> and a nice guy. But yeah. Right. yeah. So we, we've um, asked for your questions now and your I, text messages in. I've got a question just before we go on. Okay. Um, in the documentary, there's an, sort of an underlying love story between mm. you and Patricia, a fellow uh, flat earther who does a podcast. Yeah. What's the story? What? Because we were all rooting for you there. We yeah. thought... We were going to get some romance. I, I, you know, that was when we did when we shot this. I had just come back. Patricia and I had parted ways for a little while. She went to London, and I went to Canada, and we did our thing for about a year. And we came back, and we're still really, really close. Don't don't get me wrong, but we yeah. realize now that that flat Earth is kind of bigger than us, and so there's this sort of team aspect. So we do stuff all the time. I mean, she's here, and you know, we, we've been hanging out and doing stuff. But we realize that uh, we don't want to you know ruin the team, break up the team, mm. you know, in case you know. Right. So we'll see don't what happens. The crew. We'll see. Yeah, we'll <laughs> see what happens in the future. No, I love her to death, and yeah. right. and it, she's she's a wonderful person. Uh, and yeah, it was really sweet to see what never they did in the film. Never say never. Okay. Hey. Yeah, but thank you for rooting for me because <laughs> I. I heard that from a lot of people. Even trolls are going rooting for you, man. <laughs> we, I don't agree, but gosh, I hope we've all been the there. Um, like, yeah. Hamish, what's your question for Mark? Kelda, um, I was just heard you earlier on. You were just 
more or less completely wrote off everything produced by NASA or the Americans. Yeah. And uh, I was just wondering, how do you feel about all the information and evidence and work done by the various other space agencies around the world, including India, Japan, and even New Zealand space agency? Sure, sure, sure. And I'd like to preface this but to say that, because I've known NASA people, uh, 99% of the people that work at NASA aren't in on this. I mean, you know, there's people that make fuel systems and polish capsules and, and do all the other stuff, but telemetry guys, those are the only guys that have to be involved. So so other space agencies like the Europeans and the Japanese and yeah, the Israelis going to the moon recently, uh, those uh, the same sort of blueprint. They just followed what NASA did. So if you want to make some money, you got to remember NASA gets $54 million a day from the from the government as a budget. So if you want to make some money and employ some people, it's it's not a bad thing. But yes, every other space agency, anything that's, that's made from space is a lie. What, what about Google Maps? Google, you know, when you... Really? Where, where, right. where, where do they get those pictures? A drone. Uh, well, you no, you can take you can take uh, uh, you can take high altitude photos and, and you know as high as spy planes and a lot of them. You know, we actually hook up uh, um, cameras to our commercial airliners, kind of like what they do with Google, you know, the local Google Maps. I don't know if you have cars with cameras yeah. that drive around. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if they do them anymore, but uh, you can do those and then just stitch them. It's just programming. Right. Just okay. stitch them around the globe. Maggie, what's your question? Hi, Matt. Hi. Hi. I'm like the most open-minded person you'll ever meet um, and good on you for standing up what you believe in because I could not be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think. Okay. Stand up for what um, you believe in until it becomes too hard. Right. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, you said that why would we believe anything that came out of the state? Right. Um, but then you said your documentary was made in Los Angeles. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it kind of just, like, are you American? I, am I what? Are you American? Yes, yes, I am American. Oh, I, I see the contradiction there. Yes, I, I understand. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is, that, look, the United States government, uh, I'm going to probably get in trouble for this, but I'm still on, I'm, I can fly, so I think I'm fine. Yeah, Which yeah. is, look, I, I'm just saying when it comes to the United States government, uh, take it with a grain of salt. The, the, yeah. Our government tends to lie about everything. We're very, very yeah, good yeah, at yeah. it. Oh, governments yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> you guys Thanks. should catch up. <laughs> Thanks, Maggie. Uh, Steve, what's your question for Mark? Uh, hi, Mark. Um, uh, hi. I'd just, I'd just like you to explain the rotation of the sun and the seasons, because if it's flat, got it. Um, if it went behind, everything would be dark. Right, we right. Wouldn't have a, a daylight zone. Right, right. You know the time zones. It's a, it's a great question, and I should have clarified. It's a short segment, so there's only so much I can do. Which is not only are we in a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling, but the sun and the moon are inside here with us and they are very, very tiny. So the sun isn't, uh, I'm not gonna convert it to kilometers for you guys, hundreds of thousands of miles across and it's not 93 million miles away. The moon isn't 2,000 miles across, nor is it uh, 237,000 uh, miles away. They're both about the same size, less than 50 miles. And when the sun, you think it's setting, uh, it just goes off into the distance. If you have a, ever have any doubt of that, take a glass of water, put a flashlight behind it on a, a flat table and move the flashlight back. The flashlight will set even though it's on a flat table. There so you go. Why, yes, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> why hasn't someone flown to the moon? Well, probably not the sun because it's hot, right? Is the sun hot? Well, sure. Sun's hot. Yeah. So like, why doesn't someone fly to the moon if it's close? Oh, well, they the probably have, but that's just right. it. I mean, you've got to remember, we militarized space. The United States government did that deliberately back in the day, right. which was, that's the first thing you want to do. Is first off, you want to seal off the outer edge, which is Antarctica, with the Antarctic Treaty in 1959. And then you seal off the upper edge, the dome, by militarizing space, which is what Does we it, did for the longest so time. So you're saying the Antarctic Treaty, which is where everybody kind of agreed not to mine and... Go not to do anything. Ruin it. Yeah, yeah. You're saying that it is to protect the border. Yeah, yeah, that, because that's what you would do. Which is, and, and that was one of the keys for me. Which was, what conspiracies are bigger than money? And the Antarctic Treaty basically says that no, no corporation from any country, no, how, no, no matter how much money they have involved, can go there. And that goes against everything that we are as a people. I can only speak for America. We, we're ruled right. on greed and power and money. So uh, the circumference of the world is about forty thousand kilometers. Is that how far you believe? the the plate the flat earth that we're sitting on is across roughly yeah well no 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 roughly across i think we worked it out again this is this model is has flaws no question but we're our best guess is between 20 and 25,000 miles across across give or take yeah okay
No? Why don't you fly a drone into the end of the wall? Uh, that's a wonderful question. And actually, they banned drones two years ago for whatever reason. Once we started, <laughs> right. seriously, it was a, it was an addendum to the Antarctic Treaty where because people were getting, hey, why don't you do drones? And all of a sudden, this new thing popped up: drones are now forbidden in Antarctica. It's like what? Why would you do this? No, they do. They they listen to us a lot. Oh. Are there many rich benefactors of like um, people involved in flat Earth? Like, could you go undercover and that scoot across to the also wall a great question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, could you get a very rich person, a billionaire, to take his private jet and just get a pilot and say, punch oh. it, yeah. just go for broke? Well, there's a couple of things there that would be wrong. First off. Uh, you'd have to uh, bypass the GPS system because remember the GPS system is an American military system and that would also tell you where it wanted you to go. It would steer you in a certain direction. Yeah. You'd have to bypass uh, compasses and pl what pilot's going to be crazy enough to do that because the military is going to ward you off. Once you get out over the ice, they're going to be like, turn back, turn back, turn back. And yeah, it's not worth mm. it. Look, if you have a billion dollars, you have a lot to lose. Right. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Mark, thank you so much for coming We can honestly sit here and talk to you all day. <laughs> I have talked about it all day. No, no. I think you've got a lifetime ahead of talking about it as well. I hope you get your flight to space. Thank you. To prove right or wrong, I hope you get a flight to space. Thank you. If thank I won, why not? Give you the ticket. And by the way, could I could I ask one request? Could, yeah. Could you say, uh, hey, to Patricia out there, say, hey, you know, we're, we're you want me to put a good word. Yeah, put him a good word put for it. me. Yeah. Hey, Patricia, it's um, Vaughn here. <laughs> <laughs> We're all rooting for this fella, all right? <laughs> a lot of shared interest, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, there Mark, was some undeniable chemistry going on there. Mark Sargent, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you very much, guys.